So as we've gone through a lot of these videos together and learned a lot of techniques about mediumship. I hope, you know, all of you guys who are subscribed to my channel, who've been watching a lot of these videos, I've heard a lot from you. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. I learned a lot from you as well. Um, please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and uh, give me a little like and please um, hit that little bell so it goes ding when I upload something. What I have for you today is a video that, of a psychic medium I've never heard of before. She's Australian. She's uh, Her name is Sam K and it's spelled S-A-M-M -M, and then it's a capital K. And I, I received this video along with a ton of other videos from a very good friend of mine, Richard Saunders, who has the data skeptic, uh, data, <laughs> Richard Saunders, who has uh, the skeptic zone in Australia. So I have an awful lot of his, his videos he's given me over the years. And a lot of them are, are psychics and, and so on that are from Australia. A lot of it has that theme. So I don't know who this person is. I think it's really interesting to watch a video of somebody giving a reading and you and I have no idea what is going on because we don't have a track record to follow this person's history and know much about them and kind of see how the method is they use. So I'm going to show you some of this video. Let's, let's talk about it as we go. Please write in the comments in the video what you think's going on. I mean, there's hot reading, there's cold reading. Maybe there's something in between. Maybe she's really psychic. Um, let's kind of look at it and see, and we'll talk about it as we go. So the setup is that it's a, it's a room of people. It's one of those morning shows. It's, you know, like those enablers where they just like to show you all the, you know, act as if the person is Act as if psychics are real and that there's no question about it at all. Okay, so here's a room of people and they just all kind of look like they're waiting for a bus or something or or the train to get here. It's, it's kind of an odd view. Don't they look like they're standing up? I, I guess they're not. So this woman's going to get a reading. And this is the like one of the TV hosts or whatever who's handling the microphone. They're going to wrestle with the microphone here in a minute. I think it's kind of funny. So... I don't know if what connection there might be. I mean, you cannot eliminate the fact that there may be a stooge in the audience, a friend of the psychic or whatever, or some information has leaked between the two. Because remember, this isn't a test. Nobody's testing anybody here. But you just assume that they don't know each other. And you assume that the station isn't feeding information somehow you know, even a little bit or just tiny bits. We do know that somebody in the audience volunteered, apparently, this is the woman who volunteered, and she had a picture of her mom. And during the break, she hands the photograph to, somebody hands the photograph to the medium that's sitting on the stage, and that's Sam. And here's Sam. And so... This is where they're going to wrestle. Look, look at her expression. That's <laughs> I just saw that. Look at her expression. She's like, I'm going to take that microphone and that is going to be my microphone. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that microphone. <laughs> look at this. Hey, mother. Okay. That's, I've you. got to go on. Sorry. Oh, hello. Hi. How Hi. <laughs> Give me that microphone. Not mine. Okay. So here's this audience. Don't they, don't they look like they're kind of like, I don't know, children from the corn or something, that, that feeling of we're all here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, Susan, be, be serious now. So this interchange at the beginning here, I find really interesting. And let's see what you guys think of it. Nice you, to meet you. You too. Now you have a photograph of... I do. I, a photograph yes. was handed to me during the break. Um, but firstly, just before I go to this, I just want to ask you, and this is really important, there is someone living, they have cancer, and I do get the name Rob or Robin. Yes, that's correct. Okay, who is this person? Um, my sister-in-law. Okay. Can you just do me one little favour before I move on to this? Okay. So now she's just going to go and she's going to talk platitudes. She's going to say... Um, that um, tell your sister-in-law that to do 
to uh, she's got a hard, a hard road ahead of her and to hang in there and that kind of stuff. So let's talk about that really quick. I'm seeing cancer. First off, I'm getting cancer. Okay, what are the odds of that? Somebody living or dead, cancer in your family or friends or somebody you know, coworker, boss, somebody you go to work, uh, church with or whatever. Okay, the odds are extremely high. And her and so heart disease or anything to deal with hearts, the heart or cancer, those are the number one and two things that are probably going to get you if you make it to adulthood. That's usually right right there. So that's this is an old medium thing that they do, and it, that that's telling us nothing. Okay, but then she throws out Rob or Robin. What are the odds the woman connected cancer and her sister-in-law to Rob and Robin? Rob or Robin. Now, Rob and Robin are both male names or female names. Rob or Robert. Robert is, I mean, how common is the name Robert? Very common. Robin could be male or female, but it's a little more unusual. Um, so, I'm not inclined necessarily to think this is a hot read. In other words, having information about the, the person in the audience ahead of time. It sounds more like cold reading to me. I don't know if you guys agree. And by cold reading is, it sounds like she's just kind of throwing something out there because she didn't, she didn't exactly say that Rob or Robin has cancer. She said, I'm seeing cancer and I'm getting a Rob or Robin. So if she had said, oh, yes, Robin is my sister, and then the psychic would say, well, does she have cancer? Or she would say, no, she doesn't have cancer. She, she would she could play that off and say, oh, well, I'm getting somebody who has cancer, and then I'm also thinking about Robin. Okay, so if that had happened, that's that's how the medium would probably have dealt with it. But they did connect Robin or Rob connected with cancer. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. it's likely, it's possible, it's a good hit. Sure sounds accurate. Um, when the woman leaves the audience and she goes to tell her family what happened to her today, the way she's gonna interpret it is probably, she's gonna say to her family, she's gonna say, I was on this, this TV show this morning and I got read by this amazing psychic and she knew that Robin has cancer. She knew she was my sister-in-law and that she has cancer. And she told her everything's going to be all right and, you know, so on. So that's how it's interpreted because that's how we want to remember. And then the story gets embellished a little bit as they go along the, with each retelling. It gets a little bit, a little more elaborate and things get added to it because we're humans and we are storytellers. And that's how we relate to each other. That's my thoughts on that little bit. If you have other thoughts, please put them in the chat. Um, the the, the um, comments and I'll, I'll check them out. Now she's going to go to her mom and let's see what she has to say about her mom because this again gets a little interesting. I've watched this once. So let's see. I see the death was a long time long journey does that make sense you didn't get to say goodbye really no that's no, what i'm was... for her it was like she knew but for you you didn't get to say goodbye yeah. the problem being is this is where you're stuck yes all right now you're who had dementia my grandpa he's passed over okay i want to stop real quick because this is important almost everybody who's who is dealing with grief is usually dealing with grief um, she's carrying around a picture with her mom a, a photo you know, and so she probably is still very much in grief and um, you feel guilt. You feel guilt because you might have been a little snappy with the person before they died. You might not have, um, you know, done the last thing they said, or maybe they wanted you to bring him some coffee or you, and you said you were tired and you didn't bring him the coffee or you didn't get the right at the moment whenever they were dying you were a little bit too late or um you had to make a decision that that your 
I'm not sure your mom would be comfortable with, or you didn't get the right kind of flowers for the funeral, or you um, didn't, whatever. The list is endless. When you're dealing, when you're in grief and you're in these situations, it's it's incredible um, the amount of of um, guilt that you hang on to, and this medium knows that. So I'm not giving her a pass on this one because that is common. Also, this statement she didn't get to say you didn't get to say goodbye. Well, what does that actually mean? You could be standing right next to a person who is dying, and they're not. And they and they go into the state where they're they're starting to die, and they're not there. You know, they're probably not hearing anything. They're in, they're in that stage, and if you're talking to them, and you're holding their hand, and they're dying, even if you're telling them you love them and you're saying goodbye, maybe you're. It's it's possible you could be interpreting that that she isn't hearing you, and you're not actually saying goodbye. So there's a lot of ways the psychology of the person who's a sitter um, who may not, I mean, she could have been there for her mom every day. Maybe her mom is in hospice and she was always there for her. But that last moment, she didn't make it in right at the time that she died or at the time that mom was coherent and mom was, was still reasonably um, able to have a conversation with maybe she got there at the time whenever her mom was probably not really able to hear and understand again I'm not giving her a pass on that because that's just a, it's just one of those things we say it's just too vague um, because you're playing off the guilt of the person so now this little exchange is going to come up here next I find really interesting so stay so really pay attention to this and um, let's go back over to the video. Yes, this is where you're stuck. Yes. All right, now you're, who had dementia? My grandpa. He's passed over. Yes. Was that Bill or William? Um, quick, quick, quick. Oh, actually, Bill or William. Actually, he had d dementia. That's my um, husband's father. No, that's the one I'm looking for. Oh, is Lionel. He passed? Yeah, we call him Lionel, but he was Bill or William but by he's, real he's name. Deceased, yeah. Yes. That's sorry. That's oh the one God. I'm looking for. Okay, that is really interesting. Did you catch all that? Because it goes really, really fast. She says, who has dementia? And the way she said it, the woman who's there, like, being, I know exactly who you're talking about. You know, it was just like really quick. Almost felt a little practiced. Who had dementia? Oh, that was my, you know, she immediately claims the person. And then she says, who's Willow William? And Bill or William, Bill or William. That's really one of those, I mean, Bill or William is so common of a name. Again, she didn't say that Bill or William had dementia. She just said Bill or William. The thing that I want to hear that you heard, see if you heard, she said, oh yeah, his name was William, but we always called him Lionel, but his official real name was William. So, so are you trying to tell me that your family member is trying to get a hold of you and he's using his official name as if it's like a, like there's a passport or something you had to show some sort of official ID. If, if your dead family member is talking to you, it's her father-in-law apparently now, they're going to go with a common name, right? They're going to go with what you called him or a nickname or something like that. They're not going to go with bill or william your official name that's that's actually on your birth certificate now, i'm going to just play that really quick again because i find this so so interesting and this is kind of the best part of the video i think of the whole reading but uh let, let's see if you if you think the same thing oh is he passed? yeah we call wait, him wait, lionel but a little further is this is where you're stuck yes all right now you're who had dementia my grandpa he's passed over yes was that bill or william um, quick, quick, quick. Oh, actually, Bill or William, actually, he had d dementia. That's my um, husband's father. No, that's the one I'm looking for. Oh, is Lionel. He passed? Yeah, we call him Lionel, but he was Bill or William but by real name. he's deceased. Now. Yes. That, sorry, that's oh the one God. I'm looking for. Yeah. I need you to... Okay, so did you catch it that time? Because it's really quick, and you hear him going... Like... <laughs> okay. 
who had dementia. She said, quickly, she said, my grandfather. She goes, and he's passed, right? The woman's in her late 40s or 50, right? <laughs> Sorry to judge. What's the likelihood her grandfather would be alive? Her grandparents would be alive, especially a grandfather, because men died first. You tend to typically die first. So she's, okay, let's give her, she's 40. Let's just say 25 years. That's kind of the guess. So 40, 50, 65 would be her parents. 75, 85, 90 if she had grandparents. And that's like kind of on the right on the line of 25 years in the generation between each generation. And that, so what's the odds that her grandparents would be alive, especially like I said, the grandfathers would be alive because they tend to die faster. So that wasn't, that was a typical cold reading tactic. Who's the grand? He's and he's dead, right? Because he's your grandfather, and you know. And then the thing about the Bill or William, Bill and William, extremely common names, but they all called him Lionel. That was weird. I think there's something. I think that's. I think that was cold reading. Let's see what else is in here. Cures dementia? Oh, heaven or whatever you want to call it. Does it give you big knockers and a small bump? <laughs> I find that just very offensive. We're talking about dead people and they're just joking around. You know, I just find that really like, ew. Adele, please don't feel guilty. Mm. This is for you. Oh, okay. Because okay. I have. <laughs> yeah, you've got to let it go because she has passed over nicely. Mm. Um, it was quick. Yes, it was. She passed over nicely? She's passed over nicely. And it was quick. And she says, yes, it was. Okay, well, it was either quick or it wasn't quick. So quick. And yeah. the funny thing is, and you may laugh at me here, but it's like she knew. Yes. Yeah. All right. And she I... had embraced it. Who's Margaret? Uh, Marge. 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 That's my auntie Marge. That's mum's sister. Living. Okay, Marge. That's another... Margaret is a very common name for somebody who's of that generation. I don't know what the demographics of Australia are at this time. If maybe the, that that would be more common, I don't know. And she said, let's go back a second. Right, and she had embraced it. Who's Margaret? Uh, Marge. 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 That's my auntie Marge. That's mum's sister. Living? Yes, yeah, very because close. Because I'm getting the name Marge and it, Marg, Margaret. Yeah. Okay, so she says, she's saying here, who's Marge? That doesn't mean living, dead, dog, cat, you know, Margaret could be the street they live on. It could be, um, could be a lot of things. So who's Marge? Who's Marge, Margaret? And that's just calling out stuff. And then the woman makes the hit. She says, whatever. She says, that's my mom's sister. And she says, and she's living, which is probably pretty likely because, you know, the, the, age demographics of um uh well you know we did see a picture of her mom her mom is probably she looks like she's in her 80s doesn't she so i guess this woman in the audience is a lot older than we think maybe it was just the way she said it that she said she said that's my mom's sister and she says oh and she's still alive right i don't know it's just a guess i, I might be reading too much into it 50-50 chance she's either alive or she's not. There's also a few issues with her. Oh, okay. But she'll be okay. Yeah. But your mum's telling me to tell her thank you. Oh. All right. I'll tell her that. Yeah, just quickly. Yeah. Who okay, that means that means nothing. Your mom's telling me to tell her thank you. She's got some health issues. Well, if your mom is in her whatever, 70s, 80s? Her sister may have some health issues. Okay, here's some more. All right. I'll tell her that. Yeah, just quickly, who's Joan or Joyce? H who, sorry? Joan or Joyce? Um, oh, no, I've got a John, Uncle no. John, but no. It's no. his female, they're not even similar. Yeah. Joan or Joyce. Now, with your mum, what I'm going to tell you, she's passed over nicely. Okay. So, John or Joyce, and she doesn't make a hit. And she even interprets the name as John. And I, I thought she said Joan or Joyce, but anyway, those names all sound very familiar. They're all very common kind of, well, not Joyce so much, but they're all kind of just 
names being thrown out there. For a certain generation, Margaret and Joyce and definitely John and William are all going to be very common names of that of that age. Robert, it's very common even now. So it was a miss. And let's see where we go, because I think we're almost done with this. Let's see what's next. She's cured. Yeah. She loves you. You were very close. Some yes. children are not close to their parents. Some are. Yeah. It's like you're missing your right hand. Oh, it is. Okay, so she's carrying around a photograph of her mother. And what are the odds that she's she loved her mother and they were very close? Probably good. Yeah. <laughs> but she's saying you're not because she's still tapping you on your shoulder, she's still guiding you, and she's still at you. Is she? <laughs> <laughs> because your mother knows best, yeah. as you would know. You can't, if it's black, it's black. If it's blue, it's blue. Yeah. Um, but the one thing I'm really getting for you, honey, is don't feel guilty. Okay. It okay. is so important. Did you say your father had dementia? Or um, that's William? My grandpa. It? No. Mum and dad. Who's and Jack? Jack's my baby. Oh! because oh, I'm getting she's talking to me about Jack is that your little one okay so at this point it's all just they're chit-chatting about because the psychic is pregnant and she's talking about how Jack is going to grow up and he's going to be a, a kind of a wildish kid he's really smart and intelligent he's going to be a wonderful kid but he's going to be a handful so that's the whole rest of the reading so who's Jack another kind of common name could have hit on anything. Remember, if if the psychic throws out a name and it doesn't hit, or something like cancer, or something about a car, or something about an airplane, or somebody who had a horse, who played the piano, if it does not hit, then they just play it off and move on to something else. It's um, it's just a real fast kind of thing. So so if they throw out, you know, I'm getting a German Shepherd. And they say, oh, no, we never had a dog, a German Shepherd. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, but I am seeing something with a rose and a garden. And I'm seeing a travel, something with an airplane. You know what I mean? They just go really fast to the next thing. So if it doesn't hit, they just move to the next thing and you forget it. The people, what, what happens is the sitters will forget the misses and remember the hits and then they start to embellish the hits so that when by the time she's told the story a few times, it becomes more elaborate. In other words, she'll say, um, even the woman knew that my son's name is Jack, which isn't true. <laughs> she knew that there was a Jack in the family or no, it, she didn't even say it was in the family. It could have been a neighbor. It could have been a coworker, somebody at church. It could be somebody that she, where she shops at, that, you know, she knows a friend from high school. It could have been a family member, any amount of Jacks in somebody's life. Jack is a nickname for John. Remember John F. Kennedy was called Jack. So the name Jack is kind of a, extremely common name if you have somebody whose name is John and think about the li likelihood of having a John in your family. So, um, you know, what do you think? I mean, we just, you and I, we just watched a video together of this psychic reading that we probably have never heard of this Australian. Um, like I said, it's probably 30 years ago, 20, 20 years ago, at least this video was made and the 90s. Ooh, wow, I can remember the 90s. You remember the 90s? And so there's not like Facebook and she's not hot reading her in that way. There's a lot of other ways of hot reading people. Don't get me wrong, but she's not looking at her social media. There's a lot of hot reading. But, you know, I just don't think she's hot reading in this case. What do you think? So leave me messages in the in the comments. I really am curious what you guys think, especially if you've been watching a lot of the channel and you're starting to learn the tricks of the trade, how these people manipulate and how they play around with phrases. And each psychic is a little bit unique. And it's really interesting how they all have their own methods. Um, they... Um, they play up this personality. I mean, this woman is Sam, is prob probably very personable. 
and they connect really well with people and they feel very genuine and loving. And like I say, with the platitudes, she starts talking to her about, you know, like go over the guilt, your mom forgives you and so on. Well, yeah, what do you think she's going to say? <laughs> that she's really mad at you still? And she's going to, she's going to, you know, thwart you at every, every chance she can get. So, I mean, there's, I mean, really, I, I don't think this was, I think this came off as a good reading. I think this woman is going to leave and the audience is going to say, boy, that was real. That was very genuine. And like I say, it happens really fast. We were able to go back and forth and look at it. If you, you know, play it back, it comes at you really fast. You don't know what's going on. But what did she get? She knew there was somebody who had cancer. Um, she threw out the name Rob or Robin, and that did connect. She knew there was somebody named William, and the woman connected with it. But his name is actually, everybody called him Lionel. And William or Will was his official real name on his birth certificate. And there was a Jack in her, again, who's Jack? I mean, how many Jacks are in somebody's life? And what else? Was there something else? Who had dementia? Well, somebody's going to have dementia. I'm not thinking of anything else. I'm not really sure she connected. The more you think about it and the way the words are played with, I'm not really she, sure she got anything. She did throw out a lot of common names and common illnesses. And they hit, they connected. This woman maybe has a good-sized family and lots of connections. What's missing? Because that's always the really interesting thing. What is missing? We don't think about that enough. So if she's connecting with the dead and her mother really wants to be in contact with her and she wants to tell her, don't feel guilty, which is common for them to feel. Um, I'm tapping on your shoulder, which is not creepy at all. <laughs> she's tapping on your shoulder. <laughs> and she said twice this little thing that, oh man, that would be really irritating that, that she's, she's, um, passed over good she's she's already moved over and she's doing good or the way she said it was really kind of creepy I'm, I'm not thinking of how she said it but it's kind of creepy the way she said it she's 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 had a good good passover or something like that and um i i think missing well obviously we're missing a lot of names and a lot of connections and um any serious advice, you know, for serious things like, you know, your husband's cheating on you. Um, your son's going to die at a very young age <laughs> in a plane accident. Or um, he's going to marry a really bad woman and tell him, you know, maybe he should. He should <laughs> I don't know. Some kind of advice. Buy Apple stock. <laughs> In a few years, you're going to learn about some product called Apple. Make sure you invest in that. <laughs> or, um, you know, watch out for, make sure you're always wearing your seatbelt because there's going to be a really, you're going to get in a pretty awful accident in about five years. And um, you'll hopefully make sure you're wearing your seatbelt. Because so you can avoid that being so bad. Not a lot of, not a lot of, I mean, there wasn't a lot of content in there. But anyway, curious what you guys all think. I'll post this up on the YouTube channel and hopefully you guys will subscribe to our channel. Give us a, give me a nice subscribe and leave me lots of comments. I uh, appreciate it and share this around and let's keep learning about this kind of stuff because I find it I find it interesting. And if you've watched this far in the video, I guess you find this interesting too. So yeah, let me know what you think.